I'm out here in Norman's Cove along the Seaview Trail. I think that's what it's called. It goes towards Chapel Head. Um, it does have another name that the locals use. It's a very nice trail. Like there's um, a lot of nice spots. Stop and look. I am going to paint here with gouache now. Gouache is a lot like watercolor. It's the same. Uh, composition of gum arabic and pigment except gouache has chalk as well and that makes it more opaque whereas watercolor is more translucent it has that very uh, kind of signature look gouache is used in schools with kids a lot Um, one thing that watercolor and gouache share is that they're water soluble, meaning once you put down the paint, it doesn't dry waterproof. You can always reapply water to it, and that will that will make it uh, active again where you can move it around. So it has its pros and cons uh, to using it in that manner. One thing with ink is the ink that you buy that has a, uh, a varnish in it that will dry waterproof so that you can apply other ink layers on top of it without disturbing it below. And that has its pros and cons too. One con is that if you build up too much ink, then when you try to put down more ink, the water actually beads because it's repelling the water. But if you put on really thin layers of ink with a lot of water, then you shouldn't have too much trouble with that. So I'm just getting some red brown here put together. I don't know the na like the exact names of these uh, pigments. It's a gouache set called Artix that I bought off Amazon, which I don't I don't support Amazon now, but at the time I bought it because of course they have good sales and stuff like that. <laughs> good shipping, but I don't really support them now, so. Um, so there's some shadow on my canvas here that might disturb it a little bit, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to have some fun today, not worry about it too much, which is how I try to always paint. It's like not trying to take it too seriously. It can get frustrating really quick when you do. Because something always goes wrong when you're painting. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, painting teaches you a lot about patience and perseverance. Um, and not taking yourself too seriously. <laughs> And it's very therapeutic. So it's good not to take it too seriously and kind of ruin that pleasure of what it does have to offer, regardless of what your skill is. I know it's really hard to put that aside because in society we're kind of taught to be good at everything or like to compete 
um, that art has to be realistic, like there's a lot of kind of like, I guess, colonial ideas that, uh, at least for me growing up, were there. By the way, I'm using uh, a sketching paper, so this is actually not the best paper to use. Like, I usually use watercolor paper, but where I just moved to a new apartment, um, I don't have all my stuff at the moment. So one thing I would say when you're painting from life is you don't have to copy it. You can use it as a guideline to kind of guide your image, but if you worry about exact copying, like it, it can get stressful and like we want to be as relaxed as possible. That's sort of my philosophy, is uh, trying to be relaxed as possible, because that will give you the best results. Because your lines will be more spontaneous, less rigid, and you can see that, like, right away in a, in a painting. And all that is, is, you know, it's all practice. people who've been painting a lot, they just realize like, yeah, like paint strokes are just like all over the place sometimes and that actually will make something that looks half decent. So you don't actually have to be self-conscious about it and just work with it and love it, you know? But, um, Yeah, enough about that. So, what am I looking for when I'm doing this right now? I want to start with a base color, just to block in what I'm doing. Um, it's always good to start light and rough, and then go darker, and uh, put in more detail as you go. With gouache, anyway. Um, yeah, a big thing with like gouache and watercolor, particularly watercolor, is saving your whites because uh, watercolor doesn't have a white that like, I mean, they do have a white, but it's not really acceptable. It's a gouache, so the uh, technique of watercolor is to preserve the white of the page for the whites. And that gives it its signature look, with the like, really fresh, kind of whimsical um, style. It's really pretty, right? Um, so it's really easy to lose that quickly, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> um, so, like, you see here, I'm just going light with the water. I could even start with the water, that would have been better, and then put the rocks on top of that because, you know, now I'm painting and I'm going next to the rocks and, it, you know, it makes me go like that and you kind of want to just make it look like, you know, it's all cohesive, 
there isn't a wave that's going around the rock because that's like called a tangent where like lines kind of intersect in a bad way where you don't really want them to be but also again it doesn't matter really that's how I feel about it anyway <laughs> Because I can always go over right now, like this, see? And then, like, I still have this block in, and I can put more red on top of that, so. And there is going to be yellow going on top of this, too, on top of the rock, so. It's good to try to keep it a bit light where it's yellow going on top. It's kind of cool how the shadows are there too. Like, it kind of makes me less um, perfectionistic in a way because it's just like, okay, it's all like this kind of abstract sort of painting, which I think approaching things as abstract first is a great way to learn about reality and how like just the shape of things and the the value like make something look realistic that really is very quite primitive um, like um, You know, like, things that look realistic, if you really look uh, close upon inspection, you'll see a lot of, like, um, abstract lines. And so, the way our sight and recognition is, in our brains, is, you know, it's almost surprising when you really start analyzing it, like, what we're registering as, uh realistic it's cool it's really cool you really observe a lot when you start painting about just you know how things really are that you might not contemplate normally and I think that's actually one of the therapeutic benefits of painting, is actually just like... It's kind of like you get to uh, contemplate things where you normally wouldn't contemplate them. Depending on what your job is and stuff, of course. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm not aiming for anything too fantastic here right now. It's pretty cold, so, um, oh, I just spit onto the cancer. <laughs> um, I'm not aiming for anything too fantastic here. It's really cold, and I have these gloves on, these camel gloves. Um, and my fingers are freezing right here, so I could try painting like this. Let's see, yeah, that might actually work. Let's see, but yeah, when you're outdoors, like it's good to kind of think about it as sketching, and then you can always bring your sketches back to the studio and work on them more. So one thing that's actually kind of fun that I did not um, indulge in, let's say. Um, when I was younger was like redoing pieces um, it's kind of especially fun in digital if you have like a piece you already worked on and then you load it into your um, editing software like or painting program it can be really fun to 
kind of redo it that way because there's lots of possibilities to you then. But it's also really fun to redo a piece um, just normally because you can see how many different ways there are to do it and uh, while that can be kind of intimidating in a way because it means you have to make choices and you could see it working a lot of different ways. It's also exciting because it's like you just realize like it doesn't matter like you're just working on an image and you're trying to make it nice but like in the end it doesn't matter if it's perfect. You can always redo it, right? You could do from all different angles. Like you can do when you start learning photography, like you can start applying those principles to your paintings of like focal length and blur and you know um Yeah, like applying different uh, lenses to the to the so-called camera, to the picture plane. So, oh, it's cool. The real benefit of art when you get into it is realizing, yeah, just like how fun everything can be. Just how fun life can be. <laughs> when you're just giving yourself permission to enjoy it, you know, instead of worrying about everything. Anyway. <laughs> That's my rant. So right now, everything's still pretty light. I'm still just kind of blocking in. And, uh... You know, I want to try to avoid making lines like that, because it's like... That's sort of how we see it in a way, but like really the line is comprised of many different like shades of color, and um, making it just one thick line is not going to be helpful. So trying to like, you know, put an indication of a line, but not really a full-on line, because then it gets harder to take out later on when you really want to. Uh, yeah. So. so, again, like, these rocks aren't very, you know, consistent to what's actually going on here, and I really did a bit of a, didn't fully, uh, go through the life. <laughs> So I'm going to block in some yellow now, like the yellow lichen, or whatever it is exactly. It's another fun thing about like art outside and stuff, is that, like you can start learning about different plants and stuff that maybe you wouldn't normally learn about. Not that I did, obviously, right now, but I, maybe I will. <laughs> I'm going to try to move this branch now because it is starting to get in the way of... Here we go. Okay. Of the paint. But, like I said, I kind of like that. Like, let's be a little more relaxed about it. I've been making art for a long time. And, uh, it's fun, you know, there's a lot of people who say they can never do it, and it's just, it's not true. 
It's just the way our culture <coughs> teaches it in school and kind of like the competitive, kind of capitalistic culture around, yeah, people being good enough, and, I don't know. So, see there, I was, I don't know if you can see that well actually. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing a bit of a different stroke on the other side there, so I'm going to go back and do it that way. Makes it a little more like... Working. Painting can take a long time. But that is kind of also what's enjoyable about it is realizing like, you know, things don't have to be done right away. And you can just enjoy this time. It's like a meditation. Oh, you can get really abstract, like, I don't know. I play around more with water here, except where it's not, um... Where it's not... Oh, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> where it's just sketch paper, it's gonna start buckling a lot. Not that watercolor paper doesn't, if you don't uh, tack it down, but, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, like, try to expedite this process a little bit by laying down, um, more saturated color right now. Typically I tend to really go slow building up. That wasn't always the case. <laughs> I used to be very heavy handed with paint. But that was one tip I learned from uh, Yoshitaka Amano. He said always use more water than you think you'll need. He was talking about ink and that was, uh, that was a game changer for me, because <laughs> I used a lot of ink. It, it really uh, started my journey into uh, what I would say subtlety, like trying to make more and more subtle changes to the canvas, realizing that's what was going to make, like, set it apart, like, small changes are really what, um, makes a huge difference in what makes something look amazing and what makes something look pretty good. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of different techniques to use. Whatever anybody tells you, you know, it's not the end. There's always more. <laughs> but that's actually what's exciting about it. That's what I was trying to kind of convey before, is that, like, you can just play. You can just enjoy. You know, you can experiment, and that's really acceptable. That's more than acceptable. Like, experimenting is kind of what is going to drive your unique voice and
just make it fun to do. Because it's yours, then. It's not somebody else's that you're copying, right? But of course, you want to try copying people's techniques, because you'll learn a lot from them, too. Okay, so this blue is a little more thick, but even when I laid it down thick, it still dries pretty light. So, yeah. What I would say is never worry about having a unique voice in art, though. Like, if you're worried about it, like, you're just not quite there yet. Um, that's what I think. That You're automatically going to make your art unique by your own hand, you know, the more you do. And the more you just get comfortable. Okay, so that's red and brown here. Putting this here as a shadow. So there's a lot of yellow on these rocks. I'm gonna try to mix it with the red a bit. So, like I was saying, gouache, the water, will pick up the old paint that you put down. So, you're gonna start mixing right on the canvas itself. Yeah, so sometimes you pick up some different paint here and there, and it can actually kind of make it nice, like a little difference. Um, making gradients in your artwork is a good idea. So, orange to yellow is a gradient. If you can make it really subtle, that's great. Um, yeah, if you start looking at anything, you'll notice how many gradients there are around, especially like in shadows and stuff. It's really cool to kind of notice that for the first time. I don't know, maybe people always notice it, and I just never did, but <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm not quite sure. So yeah, I'm trying to mix these in in a little semi-plausible way that, you know, this could be real. At least real-ish, you know? I never really liked making realistic art. I thought it was really boring. <laughs> but, um, as I've gotten older, I, uh, 
I'm getting back into it. And it is enjoyable. You know, it, it, making something from imagination can be hard. Um, so, studying realistic art actually helps you with imaginative art. Um, because what makes something look like it could be real is, you know, that it's based on principles of actual animals or actual landscapes or whatever. Um, but also, um, It's just nice to be able to look at something and just, you know, at least semi-copy it. Like, you have your reference there, ready to go. So, it's kind of nice, like, just to... to focus on colors and do your best. Any activity where you really are focused, but your mind can still kind of flow, is a really good activity to kind of regulate your nervous system. I think. I don't know much about that, but... <laughs> uh, I would say from experience that's true. Same with like puzzles. I find video games are the same way for me. Driving. Um, yeah, something that takes a bit of focus, but you can still kind of think. Nice. So, you know, like, it doesn't have a lot of form. You know, I'm using one brush. And I'm <laughs> doing it in a big way. <laughs> so. But the idea is that you start, you start with broader strokes and then you work in smaller. You know, that is the main idea that people try to teach because it is a good way of working. Now you don't have to work that way. As I said, take everything with a grain of salt. But, um, if you're teaching art, I think that's a good way to teach it. So, there is patches of yellow grass here and there. So, I'm going to put it in here, in here, in here. It's a little bit shiny here. Do that. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. I didn't guarantee you. <laughs> like, if you do any art, people are impressed because I don't know. People really appreciate art on this like kind of instinctual level or something. You, know, you, never, you never have to be the greatest artist for people to appreciate you. And in the end, it's not really for that. It's for you. So. That's what I think. You know? <laughs> I don't know. It's not looking half bad for... Saturday afternoon. It always look worse. I think there's some animal next to me. I keep hearing something in the woods. I think it might be a crow. But I haven't seen it.
So something is happening here is that I haven't captured is the way the there's like grass here. And the cliff is falling off, but this is the piece of land right here. So that's the foreground, so I can make that a bit darker. Try to emphasize that. So working with gradients, I just lay down color and then I add color in and start mixing it around. I tend to mix kind of on canvas more so than pre-mix on my palette. I'm just really lazy when it comes to mixing. Mixing is a like an art in itself. Like it takes a lot of work. Um, if you mix a color you like and you run out of it, you have to try to mix it again, and yeah, it's it's difficult. So I prefer to mix on canvas through glazing and like just actually putting the colors down together and kind of letting them bleed in and stuff. Um, okay, so I really like this part of the rock here. There's a really nice shadow. It's not as nice as the one I'm putting down, but... It's nice to look at. Yeah. If you look online, looking at art, like, it's very discouraging. There's a lot of amazing artists, but... I think it's also encouraging because at some point when you do um, learn a bunch and you get comfortable with painting and stuff, you realize that it's stuff that looks really complicated isn't as complicated as it seems. So mastering that process of realizing that is actually really gratifying. Like, you look at something and you're like, oh yeah, I know how they did that. And then you decide if you want to do it yourself or not. Like, in the end, it's all, you know, how am I going to spend my time? How, you know, how do I want to do this? What do I really want to do? Anyway. I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> I mean, the whole time you're making art, you're always like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, no matter how good you get, I think there's always that there to some extent, for sure. But you know, I've I've heard uh, massive pros, like professionals, and um, say that like it never gets easier in terms of art like you're always you're always looking at your art and critiquing it and feeling like you're not good enough that you're an imposter whatever um so that's it you know okay so i'm gonna put in some blue for shadows now what i have noticed that shadows tend to be on the blue side. Um, so I always put in a little bit of blue. So I want to mix that in a bit. I don't want it to look like just this blue streak. So I want it to look like integrated you know, shadows. <clears throat> okay. 
I know it's too light, but what I really want to do is actually mix a red with a blue. So I'm mixing the rock color with a blue in it. And that will just turn it a little more um, bluish. And we'll be able to look for it. No, it's getting really red there, but no, I kind of like that. Maybe a little more blue would be good though. Yeah, it won't work And, oh, it's always good to have tissues. I use tissues a lot. Um, just gonna need to use my plug here for a second. I do have tissues, but they're not in an accessible spot right now. Oh, yeah, that's, that's too <laughs> It's too dark. So, this is the thing, once you start putting down darker colors, it's like, it gets a little more like, oh, okay. This is what we're doing. But, also, just going for it is good. The lighting's changed now, the summit on a cloud. So that's not bad, like, you know, that's not bad. I think what I would do is when I have a little more control, like if I'm back at the studio or something, <laughs> um, or, you know, wherever you are, that you're inside doing art, um, I would reapply some water and just kind of finesse it a little bit with a smaller brush. But for now, I'm happy enough with this. And like, this is not supposed to be the main focal point. This rock here is. So I don't want to make this too dark or too um, too detailed. Like, this is gonna have a little less detail than the other. Oh, yeah, so I'm putting more yellow on this for the lichen, and this actually might help to uh, mix it a bit, but I put too much there, so never panic too much, like a lot of stuff is fixable, especially with gouache, it's not quite the same as watercolor, but there's a bit more worrying. <laughs> Rich. Just trying to get less blue. But yeah, so oh, darker. Maybe more dark in there because now it looks a bit funny. So you're always back and forth, back and forth. That's what like art is kind of about. Like you're just you're working on it. You might like a part of the painting, and then after you do another part, you don't like it as much. That's hard, but. You learn to make sacrifices too, you know, sacrifice what you really thought was working, that you don't want to give up because you worked hard on it, but you know it's for the betterment of the picture. It's hard. Sometimes you can overwork it, you know, you had something better and... It's not as good now, but that's all part of learning and also like if you didn't if you didn't like it 
to the point where you changed it and it's just not as good like you know you, you still didn't have where you want it to begin with so it's not really a huge loss so oh I don't think you can see what I was doing there that's too bad but I'll do that now to the other rock I'll show you the best camera set up right now but um I'm doing making do with what I have and make decisions about uh, upgrading later because I just want to get into the habit of um filming and putting it out there and I don't want to get too hung up on gear because that's not really what it's about which is another thing that like you know, as an artist, you'll be up against is worrying about having the best supplies and do you have the right gear? Do you know enough to paint? You know, it's endless. You'll come up with every excuse you want <laughs> to stop you from really painting and stuff like that. But yeah. Okay, so the sun is behind a cloud and I'm freezing, but I wanna I wanna do this so you can see what I was doing. So I'm coming back in, I'm gonna focus on lichen again. This rock here doesn't have as much shadow as the other one here. Uh, I'm gonna put in a bit anyway, regardless. Um, but yeah. So, I'm just working, just want to kind of lightly touch, you get a feel for it. You're never really doing it wrong. This whole rock is really covered by like and stuff. I'm gonna kinda of just mix it in over. So that's one thing that can happen if you work too much on a spot, like you can take up the paint and it's hard to put it down because there's too much water or whatever. But it's best to stop working on it then instead of keep touching it because you'll just kinda of tear it into the page potentially. Alright, so that's pretty good. Let's put in some of the blue. Just a tiny bit in certain spots. I'm gonna mix red and brown in with it. Because the red and brown is the base of the rock, and then the blue is the shadow. Uh, that's a bit too much because there's a bit too much water on my that's fine. Yeah, it's always good to dab off excess water, which I'm not really doing now, because I did not get my tissue out. I forgot. Which is pretty typical. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of so cold that my nose is running. You hear me, like, sniffing. <laughs> anyway. I really want to make this spot deep and dark. It's good to have like, you know, kind of like areas of interest. Um, 
and then areas where your eyes can relax a bit. You don't want everything to be too much detail, that's something I used to do a lot. <laughs> Put in a lot of detail, which, I mean, it can be its own kind of way of doing things, but... I think, you know, in terms of that principle of subtlety that I was talking about, like, that's a, a way to be more subtle, is to use kind of restraint on how much detail you're putting in. It's really common for beginners to put in a lot of detail. So, oh, there's an area, let's see if I can get it, I hope I can, <laughs> there's an area where there's like, part of the rock catching the light on the side, that's like way too thick, <laughs> but um, let's see what I can do. I kind of want to make a, a rock separation, which it's hard to do right now because it's just hard to do like finessing this, but, so, there's light on dark and dark on light. That's a great principle for thinking about composition, but the reason I think it works is because it's just a principle of nature, so wherever you see a dark edge, you'll see a light edge next to it. So that's what's like creating the contrast that makes you be able to see things kind of clearly. So along here is the light, but I need to put a dark edge along the light in order for it to show up and look like, you know, an edge that's separating the rocks. But you don't want it to be too much like um, a line, so then you put a little bit of water, and then you can kind of go stuff like that. And that might be a little bit, you know, not subtle enough, or it's a bit too dark. Depending on what you're going for. Like, okay, so now we're getting into drips, which I'm a fan of drips, you know, like using them. to make it kind of interesting, or just to, like, you could let it drip and let it dry, or you could pull your brush on it and just mix it in, and then you get more color variation. Yeah, so, that's, like, the idea there. Okay, I want to try, yeah, make another edge here. Trying to, anyway. I was kind of feeling before. Oh, the sun's out again. That's so nice. <laughs> it's really a lot warmer when the sun's out. this in I'm deciding to put some more darks in here, you know. I really like these rocks, like how contrasty they look, like the red, the dark red shadow.
Yeah, so I'm making a bit of a mess here, but I'm okay with it. We're just having fun, having a chat. Um, there's a little light piece here. I need to try to do some more light stuff. thing is you can always just keep working on it, you know? There's no pressure. Yeah, I kind of want to like switch this around a bit because it's getting a bit too choppy, you know? Okay, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. We'll leave it there for now, anyway. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's my favorite. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm do it now. Um, okay. So, I'm trying to, like, make it look like there's grass going over this now. Which, like, you know, I'd use a smaller brush and stuff, but also, like, you don't have to get too obsessed with blaze grass, because, like, oh, we got time for that. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> Somebody does, if they want to. But also, I, yeah. I don't know if people do have time for that, so. <laughs> Let me just say it that way. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get some grass in there. Oh, you can't see it there. It's fine. Okay, yeah, that that's what I think. But we do want so I'm gonna put some water on this and extend this out because really like what I'm seeing here is like a hill that's kind of you get sometimes you find you just have better strokes stuff like that what I was saying like just being really loose is good um so oh that's blue oops so that's not the deal you just mix it in and actually it will complement the water. So bringing colors in to things that don't actually have that color is good to create unity in your composition. So that's 
That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> but yeah, who knows? I think that's good. And a bit of red. Might be a little more salt than that, Okay, there's some gray twigs here, so I'm gonna actually just try to put in some some white, and then make it look kind of like there's twigs coming up. Again, I'm doing this really quick now, so you can take your time. With it. It's good to take your time when you're beginning with art. As your speed will always improve as you learn more, so it's better to learn how to do it correctly than to really try to speed your way through something. So I just kind of ruined those strokes I just did. It's, it's good to make sure that, you know, if you're putting something that's supposed to be in the foreground, have your background done so that uh, it looks good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah. Planning uh, can be important if you want to do like a masterpiece. <laughs> but it's also okay if you don't. There's artists who never plan. Uh, Lauren Mark said she never plans her compositions. And she's a very talented artist. <laughs> or hardworking artist. It's probably a better way to put it. <laughs> um, I used to never play in compositions and just go for it. And I guess to some degree I still don't, but. I'm definitely thinking about it more now because I want to try to challenge myself as an artist to do something out of my comfort zone and it's never really been quite my comfort zone to pre-plan, like I just tend to kind of go with what I want to do in the moment and treat it more like a meditation rather than like a technical challenge. I definitely view art more now through that lens of technical challenge, so.
slope. Okay, so that's pretty good. There's more I could do with the water. That's what I'm thinking about now, but I kinda, yeah, I want to try to focus it as much as possible on uh, this rock here. what I'm thinking about anyway. I think, yeah, there's actually a little bit of uh, ice on my canvas. <laughs> so that's funny, but anyway, I'll show you what I have here. So, this is a, a sketch. It's okay, but uh, you know it's a start to where I could bring it back to the studio and do more with it, um, or I could do it again, completely. Um, come back out here, do more sketches, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, there's my view. Of course, it doesn't quite look like what you see on camera, but. Um, it's a, it's a gorgeous view. I'm gonna walk back home and get some food. So, anyway, it was, it was a pleasure, uh, painting with you. And, uh, I hope you got something out of this. Um, if nothing else, then that you can paint no matter what your skill level is, and enjoy it. Okay, uh, have a good day, and take care.